many ways. I don't know why, but it seems like the older we get, we just don't get it anymore. It seems like the older we get... Now, you got to remember, young people, if you're under 50, you cannot preach this. You cannot talk this. But it seems like the older we get, we think it's always about our way. We want it to be just our way. I remember at my church there in Pennsylvania, I went in and made a beautiful coffee shop. This coffee shop was nice, okay? You could walk in. See, there's one thing about old people. We need light. Okay? we got to have a lot of light in the room. Because if we don't, we can fall down, break a hip, we're laid up. They'll put us in a home right now. You know, your children, you think, oh, my children will take care of me. Wait till you break a hip. They'll put you in a home so quick. But anyways, this coffee shop was nice. I mean, it was a nice coffee shop. I come back from Africa, I walk into the coffee shop, they got these hanging lights in. They're not even a light bulb. It looks like a little dim light, you know? It's like you're walking into a room where they might be smoking some wacky stuff or something in there. I mean, it's like everything. The lights are dim. They, they, they put like the walls are dark. And I mean, I had a fit. I was mad. I started shouting. I started hollering at people. And God said to me, look around. Look around. Here it was all full of young people. Yes. Young people. Look around. We got to stop thinking that it's all about us. Right. Another time I come home from Africa, come into my church. You all might have it happen. You just build a new building. You don't know what's going to go on in there, old people. <laughs> I come home from Africa. They had disco lights up. I mean, they had flashing lights up when the music started. People get ready because they're going to pull this on you. I'm telling you right now. I can see it in Dennis. Look at him. He's getting ready. He's setting a lot of you old people up. I'm telling you now. They had a rock and roll band up front. They had, oh, listen, ah. They had a drum set, man. Everything you can imagine. And then when the service started, they dimmed the lights. And the lights start flashing and I'm standing up front. I started getting a headache. I can't even ride a ride at a fair anymore. But guess what? I was getting angry. But God said, look around. Look around. See, young people were doing something in the church that us old people's not doing. Hands were lifted. People were worshiping the God. People were even moving a little bit. Come on. You know, I don't know why. The older we get, we don't want to move. Come on. We don't want to move, you know. We just want to sit there. But I tell you what. You don't look young anymore. Act it. Act it. Now, I've got, I've got to read you something here. Now, I know a lot of you are saying, what's this man getting off talking to us like this? I know you want to throw me out of here. Don't worry, I'm leaving. George, have the trailer packed because we might have to get out of here fast. Mark chapter 10. Let me make sure I got this right. Mark chapter 10, verse 13. One day some parents brought their children to Jesus so he could touch them and bless them. Now, I don't know about you, but I want to be blessed. Who in here wants to be blessed? Now, I know some of you in here, you got money. You don't need a financial blessing, but you might need a healing. You might need your body, your youth to be restored. But it just said in the Word of God that some parents brought their children for Jesus to be touched so He could bless them. So what I'm finding out today already, now we know who the greatest in the kingdom of God is, the children. It says here, <coughs> but the disciples uh, scolded the parents for bothering him. They must have been old people too. So verse 14, I know you're thinking, boy, this guy's really hacking on us tonight. I want to see miracles happen. It's time that we concentrate on one thing, kingdom building. Do you know how many people hacked on me already for preaching at... Suck, bang, blow. <laughs> like Dennis said, people, we can't even say that word in the church. Suck, bang, blow. Everybody say it. Suck, 
Jesus moved there today and about 10 people raised their hand for salvation. People that were wearing patches, people that you would never get into a church stood there and said the sinner's prayer. There was people sitting at a bar and a drink in front of them, tears coming down their face, and they said the sinner's prayer. At suck, bang, blow. <clears throat> when Jesus saw what was happening, he was angry with his disciples. He said to them, let the children come to me. Listen to this. Don't stop them, for the kingdom of God belongs to those who are like these children. Children. Wow. I never read that in the Word of God. I better read it again. The kingdom of God belongs to those who are like these children. Maybe we start, maybe we need to start acting like children again. Now I'm going to tell you where this message was influenced and brought on to me was during Thunder in the Valley. We do a big bike ride every year in June at my bike shop. People come out, we ride, we eat a lot of roasted pig. You know, it's a big day of fun. But we made it a community day where kids can come out also. So we got a golf cart that Dito gave to me. I'm getting old, okay? I like riding on a golf cart now and then. So all these kids jumped on the golf cart with me, and we're riding around our property. We got 15 acres by the bike shop. So we rode up to the back of the 15 acres. There's a little pond there. The pond is about the size of all of this up front. And right away, when kids see a pond, they get excited. And their kids are talking to each other, and they say, oh, look at that, look at that, there's a pond there. And the first thing that come to my mind, oh, my God, these kids are going to come up here when I'm not with them, and they're going to get in the water. One of them's going to get hurt. One of them's going to drown. Something bad's going to happen. So as soon as they're all excited talking about the pond, I said, you don't want to go near there. There's a crocodile in there. <laughs> Little kids have lost their toes in there. And they're like, oh my goodness, go, go, go. So a little bit later, we're driving around again. Now listen to this here. This is why I believe Jesus wanted children around, okay? I don't know why, but we always want to be convinced that God's real. We, that's all, we always want proof. God, you know, I'll really serve you if you heal my hip. God, I'm going to do extra for you if you do this. But see, we're driving around that pond again, and one of these children, I forgot all about the crocodile, hollered out, I see him! I'm like, where? Where? They scared me. They seen the crocodile. Later in the day, we're running by there again. My granddaughter's with me. She says, oh, Poppy, stop. I see his head. I see his head. But see, listen what happened to these children. They went back down to the party. They started telling everyone, there's a crocodile up there in the pond. And people's trying to tell them, there ain't no crocodiles. Yes, there is. We've seen it. See, all they heard was a word. All they heard was somebody told them there's a crocodile in there and they believed. Yeah. Why do you think Jesus loved the children so much? Why do you think he blessed the children? Because he didn't have to prove to them anything. Here was these little children. They're going around. One person said, there's no crocodiles in Pennsylvania. And the little kid said, my pappy got a gun and he's going to go shoot it. We're going to bring it down here and show you. Just the other day, my granddaughters were back. Now listen to this. This has been a few months, okay? My granddaughters and me went riding on the golf cart up around the pond, and guess what? My one granddaughter, we're riding. I forgot all about the crocodile. She said, Pappy, I think I see him. I what? She says, a crocodile. People, we need to start believing this word of God. James chapter 4, verse 17 says, If you know you should do something and not do it, you have sinned. 
You know, I could go right down through Scripture after Scripture. God blesses those that take care of orphans and widows. People are dying in Sudan, Africa right now. <clears throat> the last trip into Sudan. I want you to imagine driving by a UN camp. Just imagine this. Driving by a UN camp and you see it full of children at the gate. They don't want to go in. They're just sitting at the gate waiting to see a family member because of the war that's going on. They're displaced. Dito seen it. My brother seen it. Everybody on that trip seen it. The UN says that there's going to be the worst disaster in all of history by the first of the year because of starvation, because of the war. Now, I know some of you might be thinking and might say the same thing that I say. Those people want to fight. They've always been fighting. They no sooner get done with one war and they start another war. The children didn't start that war. Children are dying. You know, I stand here today and I ask you people, I need help. It says here, I tell you the truth. Anyone who doesn't receive the kingdom of God like a child will never enter it. You know, I'm not going to talk to you about giving. I'm done right there. At the end of this meeting, you're going to have the opportunity to do what you know you should do and what you could do. But right now, I want to talk to you about you and God. Everybody fears something. We fear giving. We fear getting up in the mornings. Every one of us in here, there's something that bothers you and you fear. And see, God wants to use you. And most of you even fear that. But see, for you to truly get out there and do what God wants to use you for, you have to give him everything. You know, and I know the first thing when you say that to people, okay, I know people. When you say, give him everything, people start saying, oh, God, he's talking about my money. No, I'm talking about you. What does God want from you? He wants everything from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet. See, when you give him all of that, the first thing that he does is he takes the heart out and he throws it away and he gives you a heart transplant. So you, then you will start having a different heart at all the outlooks. But God wants to do miracles in your life. Don't tell me you're too old. I'm 54. I'm getting a little bit of age on me. And guess what? God keeps doing more things and more things and more things. I hope. And as long as I can breathe, I hope when I'm 64 years old, I'm going to get up here and tell you the same thing. When I'm 74 years old, get up here and tell you the same thing, maybe with a little bit more zeal, because I've lived it a little bit longer. But God wants to use you. You know, I know there's probably some of you here that might say, well, you know what? I just came to church tonight because my wife made me come. Some of you might say, I'm just here because so-and-so made me come out to hear the machine gun preacher. But you might say, I'm not quite sure what God wants from me. I want to show you what God wants from you. God wants you to treat him like this chair. See, the church complicates serving God. I've had people come to me and they say, you know, I thought all I had to do was start following the, the Bible. I gave my life to Jesus. I thought all I had to do was follow the Bible. I joined the church. They come out with the bylaws and constitution thicker than the Bible. This is real life. But all God wants from you is to treat Him like that chair. See, all of you come in here tonight 
You come in, you found you a nice comfortable place to sit down, and you just sat down. You didn't test that pew. You didn't test that chair. Some of you should have walked in and maybe moved a little bit, okay? Made sure it was going to hold you up. You got what I'm saying? But you didn't. You just walked in and you plumped yourself down. You put everything in your life into something that has no life. That pew cannot give you life. That chair cannot give you life. It can't give you anything. A matter of fact, I want you to just think for one moment... Imagine if that pew collapsed now, just fell to the ground. What would you do? You'd look over at Pastor Dennis and say, what kind of insurance you got? And he would say, I got your fault insurance. Your fault. See, that chair can let you down. But God wants you to treat him like you've done that chair. He wants you to get in the palm of his hand. <clears throat> Just get in the palm of his hand. He wants to put his hands on you. He wants to surround you. And the biggest thing is, he wants to use you. It can be in your home community. It can be in your home state. Maybe it's in another state. Maybe it's in another country. I don't know. But God wants to use you. And he's real. Now, I know some of you know my story. 30 years ago, Sam Childers, he couldn't read or write. I'm not going to go through everything now, but I think I just read from the Bible a little bit tonight. I'm not that good of a speller, but I can read. Why? I didn't go back to school because God wanted to use me. See, you might think you're not qualified now, and guess what? You're not. But with God, He can make you qualified. With God, He can make all dreams come true. He can make miracles in your life. Preachers used to say, I heard this all my life, how much or how bad you need Jesus Christ. I'm telling you, I won't even preach that anymore. I want to tell you how bad Jesus needs you. You never heard that before, did you? Jesus needs you. You're part of this big puzzle. You're part of the whole thing of doing kingdom work in this world till that trumpet sounds. And all you got to do is say, here I am. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Come on, every head bowed, every eye closed. If you want to make a new commitment tonight to Jesus Christ or you want to make first-time commitment tonight to Jesus Christ, or you just need a miracle in your life, slip your hand up real quick and put it down. Come on, real quick, put it down. Real quick, come on, real quick, put them down. Okay, you can open your eyes for a minute. A lot of hands went up. Okay? I'm about to pray a blessing upon you. But I want to tell you first that blessing's not going to work. It's not going to work. Unless your heart is truly right with God. So I'm going to ask you, just right where you're sitting, to follow me in a, uh, a short prayer. Romans chapter 10, it's titled, Salvations for Everyone. All we got to believe is God sent His Son to die on the cross for us. And we all know the story. But the big thing, I don't like to focus on the death. I want to focus on He lives today. So I want you to just follow me in a short prayer, and you can whisper it, you can think it. I don't care how you say it, okay? But just follow me in this prayer as loud as you can, if you can speak, okay? And then I'm going to pray a prayer of blessing over you. Every head bowed, follow me in this prayer. Our gracious Heavenly Father, gracious Father I'm, here today I'm here today on my own free will. Asking you, Lord, that you will forgive me of all my sins. And they are many. I ask you to forgive me of all the times I didn't believe, all the times I've cursed you, all the times I've walked away. I ask you now. Forgive me. Forgive me. And I ask it, I ask it. In, Jesus name, in Jesus' name, 
Amen. 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 You know, I know some of you in here, you might need your youth restored. I want some more back, okay? Maybe some of you just need a financial blessing. Maybe some of you got a broken heart. Maybe some of you this, something, something's not right in here, okay? But you need a touch from God. See, God wants to do a miracle in your life. Everybody got that? But let me show you something. If I go to give you something, here you go. Here you go. If I go to give you something, see, I don't care who you are. Everybody catching on? I don't care who you are. If I go to give you something, you got to put your hand out. I gave you one already. Here, you see? She wants all she can get. I don't have nothing for you. Everything I got's in the trailer and you got to buy it. Okay? But I know someone that has exactly what you need. I know someone that can give you your heart's desire. Now, I don't care what you do, okay? I don't care what you do. I'm a man like most of the men that's in here, okay? Yeah, I'm a man. I'm not thinking I'm double gender or whatever people are nowadays. But anyways, <clears throat> I know I shouldn't have said that. We're in a church. <clears throat> but anyways, it's hard to lift our hands up. I don't know why, but men, we don't want to do it. We just think, yeah, I'm a man. I ain't lifting my hand up. But see, if you want to receive something, you've got to put your hand out. Now, I know when I first started lifting my hand, I would kind of sit there like this here, and I'd kind of go like this. I, you, you know, you can kind of slick your hair back. I don't care what you do, okay? But if you need to receive something, this is a prayer of blessing. Now, what we're going to do here tonight, because we don't like to lift our hands and people look at us, you all got to shut your eyes while I make this prayer, okay? Everybody close your eyes. Now, if you need to receive something from God, it's all up to you. Lift that hand. Father, in the name of your son, Jesus, look at your people now, Lord. Father, these hands are not raised to a preacher. These hands are not raised to the machine gun preacher. These hands are raised to you with the faith that you will be the answer. Father, as a servant of God, I ask that you will start to mold. You will start to shake. You will start a miracle right now. You would start to strengthen. You would cast out. You would rebuild. Father, I'm asking that you would begin to use your people. Allow the miracle that they need to fall upon them. Father, I ask that miracles financially would come. Healings would come. I ask that youth would be brought back to the body. I ask that hearts would be mended. I ask that children would be saved and families would be brought back together. I ask that miracles in the name of Jesus will hit your people and fall upon them right now. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. We're done. Amen. All but one thing. Okay, I got to do a demonstration here. You, now, you people, and from here to here, all look like young people. The rest of them, they're old, okay? I know, I'm a bad person. I hack on old people all the time. So I'm going to ask you to participate. If you don't want to, you don't have to. But I want you to come get in a line right here and face me. Come on, if you feel like it, get in a line and face me. I want to show you exactly what happens in Sudan, Africa, and what happens in Uganda and Ethiopia on our feeding programs. Children line up. Some of them are hurting, malnutrition. Some of them are sick. 40% of the children that we feed every day only eat what we feed them, what you feed them. 40%. I'm going to tell you the truth, how I got that award. When you just come walking up here one at a time, I'm going to touch the palm of your hand. When I touch the palm of your hand, you walk back to your seat. The children are being fed just a cup of food. That's all they're eating today. See, this is the truth. I got the largest in the world, I got the largest award in the world for doing that. But the truth is, every day, this is what happens. The bowl goes empty. 
and all those children don't get fed. See, that's the truth. Those children will stand in the line and they're still hurting and they're still hungry. Most of us overeat every day. These children are not eating to be satisfied. They're only eating enough to survive. But they stand in that line for an hour or so and they still don't get fed. And then the last thing they hear is, you got to go home. And you got to go. You got to go. There's no more food. You got to go home. <coughs> See, that's what happens. See, you people are already blessed. You know why? You don't have to tell them they got to go home. I need your help. I feed children. The biggest thing that bothers me, my brother seen the children in the seventh orphanage I started. Dito haven't seen them yet. One little boy, his whole body is full of scabs and sores. He can barely walk. He can't talk at all. And he's almost four years old. <clears throat> they found him on a pile of garbage. The pile of garbage was his home. Other little children, like them little girls and little boys, are raped. Okay? I'm trying to finish a building, and I'm asking you for your help. Children are dying. When we leave this world, what's people going to say about you? You could be a legend just by hearing God. I need your help. God bless you all. Thank you. Dennis, you can... <laughs>